Hi everybody, Lamkin here, your friendly neighborhood law specialist. <laughs> um, today I want to talk about some setups and some frame trap stuff. Uh, I have talked about this in the past, but it has been a long time since and, and a lot of things has happened in the world of Tekken 8 since then. A couple patches have come and gone. Currently we're on patch 105 and I've discovered a lot of stuff. I've seen a lot of stuff since those videos. Um, so I, I thought it was about time we make a little bit of an updated video on that. I'll talk about some of the the more uncommon uh, setups that I haven't really talked about in the previous videos that I hadn't yet discovered or uh, uh, found the full potential of uh, back then. So today I'm not going to be talking about the uh, one, two, up, four, three into launch and grab or the back turn parry or like DSS uh, pressure and stuff like all the stuff I have talked about already in, in great detail all that knowledge from previous videos it still applies so today is going to be for some of the things that I haven't yet uh, talked about so undoubtedly if you have watched a lot of my content you will probably have seen me do a lot of these uh, setups and frame traps and stuff um, but today I'm going to explain why I do them and why I think they're so good so I have five today that I'm going to show you. So without fur further ado, let's just jump right into it. All right, so the first setup I want to talk about today, it has to do with DSS free. This is a really good move in and of itself. It comes out at 19 frames, so it's unreactable, even though it is a high. It is a homing move, so it's really good for locking your opponent down, keeping them honest, keeping them from sidestepping. It is plus free on block. It also does 6 damage of chip on block, so uh, it has a lot of things going for it. But mostly what I'm interested in terms of setups and stuff is the pushback it gives on block as well. You can see even if I'm quite close to my opponent, like all up in their face, it will still push them out of jab range. So even though it's only plus 3, they cannot reassert their pressure with the, with the jab, at, le at least not so easily. So plus free and pushback is mostly what we're interested in here. And what I like to do with this is I like to catch them off guard with the Shaolin Spin Kicks. In other words, the Magic 4. Let me try and, and demonstrate here. So first of all, it's important to notice that they can... Now, they you will push them out of a jab range here. So the first jab will whiff if they try to jab check you. But... You can crush their jab. If you notice that they... So one, one way I would like to use this uh, is first you need to get, gather a little bit of information. So you, you could do something like uh, while standing 4 into DSS3 or maybe I would suggest while standing 3 into DSS3 because it's unreactable since... Uh, oh, sorry, not unreactable, uninterruptible since while standing 3 is uh, plus 17 on block and goes into DSS automatically. Something you do something like this, and you see what they do. If they like to, if they like to jab check you, then you 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 have one diff, one option. And if they like to try and close the gap with a slower attack, you have another option. Uh, let me see. If they try to catch you on the way in with a jab, you will trade with the magic four, so it won't work. You see, but anything. So, so yeah, again, a jab, 10 frame jab is the fastest move in the game, pretty much. It's not really, but uh, like traditionally it is. But you can crush the jab with the nunchuck. If they like to jab check you like this. And you get a launch, of course. Get your free combo. Very nice. Uh, but it should be noted here that... Uh, you have, in this case, you have to notice. You can make a guess and then just spam the nunchuck. Because if you just spam the nunchuck, they will catch you. It's a little bit later in the nunchuck animation that the crushing property uh, is. So you have to wait a little bit. And then if you have noticed that they like to jab, you can fade out the jab. And then slight delay on the nunchuck and you can launch them like this. If they don't jab, if they... Now, of course, they could just backdash or sidestep, uh, in which case you could you could throw out a uh, another uh, DSS free, right? But it, in the in the event of them challenging you with another attack, like a slower attack, something like forward two from Law, it comes out at 12 frames. In this case, you can catch them out with the magic four. 
Just like that. That's what I like. That's how I like to use uh, DSS three. All right. This next setup is less of a setup and more of a frame trap because really all you're doing here is you're pressuring your opponent uh, and hoping that they press into you. So we talked before about Wasteling Free being uh, plus 17 on block going into DSS and making DSS Free coming out at uh, 19 frames uninterruptible if you have time it correctly, of course. Now the same is true for Poison Arrow since two Poison Arrow also comes out at 19 frames, right? Uh, but Poison Arrow is a counter hit launcher, uh, which makes it just that much better, right? Uh, I've talked a lot about Poison Arrow in the past, it's a really good uh, tool in general. It is steppable though, but it gives you good frames, especially if you go uh, into DSS here. Does chip damage on block, does even more chip on block and, and heat and all that. Um, but it, it's especially good after Wastening Free, so a lot of people, they don't realize, it doesn't have... Look at this animation right here. People are less, and specifically I'm talking about the block animation on the player 2 law here. People are less inclined to challenge you with this animation right here. This looks like it's way more plus than it actually is. This doesn't look like it's much plus at all. But this is plus 17 and this is plus 2. Huge difference, right? But this is because the recovery on for the player one here recovery on poison arrow is a is very slow even though it does give a stagger block you know a lot of people who don't know lost frames they don't know that this is actually plus 17 they don't know that you cannot actually interrupt him here you get a guaranteed follow-up of dss1 you get a guaranteed on normal hit as well like guaranteed three plus four four guaranteed the uh, dss2 all of that stuff i went into detail about this before but specifically uh when people like to challenge this, Poison Arrow is such an amazing tool here because of the counter hit launching properties. Let me try and, and show you here. So, is it the uh, jab? Yes, the jab. The fastest move here. I don't even have to time it perfectly. Let me see. Boom. When you pick up. Something like that, right? Uninterruptible. And, if, and again, if you if you commit to DSS after uh, after Poison Arrow, again you can also easily pick up with while standing four here or whatever. So yeah, while standing free uh, into Poison uh, DSS Poison Arrow, really really good tool for uh, trapping people, making them press. Or again, hoping they press into you, getting the counter hit launcher. And again, if they block it, you get advantage on block anyway. Now, again, remember they can step it. Uh, it does have some tracking to his left side, but no, uh, not much really. And it doesn't really track to his right side. So keep that in mind. But other than that, uh, a setup or frame tra trap, I should say, that you you definitely should be using from time to time with martial law. If, you, if you're not using this, you're definitely missing out. And again, don't forget about while standing free into guaranteed uh, grab uh, attempt. Now, they can break it, of course, but they cannot... Uh, they, they they have to take the, the, the grab. Same with the, with the other DSS uh, stops from while standing free. Plus 17 on block. Uh, definitely uh, keep that in mind. So, yeah, let's move on. Alright, I'm gonna try and keep this one a little bit short and sweet. So, up forward free is not something I've been using nearly enough in the past, at least back when I was making the older guides and talking about setups back in the day and stuff. And it's definitely something I've found the utility of nowadays. So, again, up forward free, minus 8 on block, so it's safe. It, it comes out pretty fast. It is a heat engager, gives you a launcher when you are in heat. It's a really good move that you should be using a lot with martial law. So, how can you land this move? Well, uh, Again, this is more a mind games that I guess you could call it a setup. But how I like to do this is uh, mixing it up in my yeah in my using it on my slide slide mix up basically. And what I've been doing a lot in in this uh, current patch, for example, is I've been doing a lot of uh, manual DSS into crouch dash in the neutral when I want to apply my mind games and my slide mix ups. And this is where I like to incorporate upvote free. So that will be. 
uh, for example, um, since you, can, you can't do up forward free from crouch, you can do it in the middle of a crouch dash like this. You don't have to crouch dash and then wait to stand up and then do up forward free. So I like to do DSS, manual DSS, sorry, into crouch dash up forward free. Try and make them duck and uh, eat your up forward free. Again, if they block it, no big whoop, you're minus eight, you're safe and all that. Even though you lose your turn, of course. Or you'd, and again, you have to mix it up with the slides here. So, And you can also do it from manual uh, crouch dash, of course, which is also uh, something I do a lot. Now, one thing to note here before we move on, say if they like to jab check, again, you have the option to duck here. You cannot sidestep because you're minus eight. You, you don't have enough frames to parry either. You cannot do either of those things, but you can duck. So if you notice that people like to jab check you after off forward free on block, you can do off forward free and then do a like a wild standing move. Something like that, right? Now, another way I would really highly suggest you incorporate off forward free is in your DSS pressure. So this is where it all starts coming together. Remember earlier we talked about wild standing free into poison arrow DSS, right? Now, this is where, of course, if you get the counter hit here, you get the launch, like we talked about before. But this is, uh, if, if you're in the situation where they block your poison arrow, this is a good situation to commit to going into DSS on poison arrow, and then you can go into slide mix up like this. That you could do DSS crouch dash into up forward free, DSS crouch dash into slide, if you're, again, really advanced mind games. Do crouch dash into a manual crouch dash into up forward free, something like that. That's how I like to use uh, up forward free and incorporate it in my uh, slide mix ups and in my DSS pressure. And I think you you should get definitely play around with that as well. So, yeah, let's move on. All right, next one is also kind of short and sweet. It's two back two. Now, you can also do forward two back two. Just note that forward two comes out of 12 frames and neutral two is 10 frames. So this is something I use a lot, especially at round start and especially against certain mat matchups. Uh, I, I do this a lot on round start, for example, against Leroy or Brian and stuff, because some of them, they like to do orbitals on round start and neutral two will, will actually catch an orbital on round start, whereas uh, one jab will not, it will, will get crushed. The neutral two has a bigger hitbox, but that's beside the point. That's not really how, why I use it. Um, the reason I use two back two is because it's quite safe and it sets you up for uh, you, you can do the. I've talked. I have a guide on this uh, on my channel as well. The back turn tech. You do back into down back to uh, to turn around very quickly like this backwards. And now you're in a slide mix up uh, situation. So this is undoubtedly something uh, you've 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 seen me do a lot uh, in my gameplay. If if you watch my gameplay, you can also do down forward into uh, while standing forward DSS or something like that. Which is also something I do a lot. Now, I don't really have that much of an explanation on this one or other than what I've already given. It's just something I have a lot of success with. So I think I suggest you, tr you try uh, some different stuff out with that and see how it works for you. But again, mostly two back two into uh, slide mix ups. Back turnaround slide mix, two by two into uh, yeah another mix up here. Basically, yeah. Now I don't usually do down two free setups because down two free is such a risky move to use. I suggest mostly that you only use down two free as a to counter hit, like when you when you read a, a counter hit, right? Um, because it's so risky, you will get launched at least in higher ranks if, if people block that, right? So I wouldn't normally suggest people do like uh, the classic setups like uh, one two three into down two three or something like that, right? It's just uh, like you're just signing your own death waiver in, in higher ranks if you do stuff like that. But this is something that, uh, that what, what I'm about to show you here is something that I've actually had a lot of success with even in higher ranks. It's something that a lot of people haven't figured out yet. So. In higher higher ranks at, and in most levels of play, actually, I found that a lot of people they like to challenge uh, forward free one. Um, so what I've been doing is just forward free one into down two three, and I've been having, as I said, a lot of success with that even in higher ranks, um, because a lot of people they like to try and interrupt his uh, his DSS stuff because people 
like most laws they just intuitively go into DSS after um, forward uh, free one and it can be very difficult to maintain your pressure because the advantage is not that great on DSS uh, after forward free one um, so uh, most likely you will get interrupted if, if people try and jab check, check you and stuff unless your timing is like impeccable right so something that I've been doing uh, sometimes it's not something I will do a lot and I will usually not do it more than like once per fight or something like that because it's really some, something that once you do it once people will figure it out and they will be looking for it for the next time but just as a hail mary if you need something to to try if you if not if all else fails if you really want a down to free setup here is one for you that I think is probably the most reliable one right now other than like up forward uh, one uh, free into down to free or uh, like one to three into down to three or something. If if you absolutely need to do one, then I would do four three into down to three. So yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right, so that is five different setups, frame traps, mind games, tools, whatever you want to call them, that I think that you should definitely uh, not be overlooking uh, with martial law right now. So I hope. You found some of these useful i hope you found some information that you didn't know about already learn something new um but yeah cheers hope i see you soon again until next time have a good one bye